Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And for a lot of you, this is the reason you come here. Not everyone comes for the informative content, but if you're here for the juiciest gossip, you just came to the right place. And uh, I was just sent an excerpt from Martin Burkham's new book, which I haven't had a chance to read. I don't know if I will read it or not. Uh, but you guys know I have a generally favorable view of Martin Burkham. I don't necessarily agree with him on everything, but as far as guys in the industry go, I, I push him in the direction of being one of the good guys, uh, mainly just because the guy promotes basic, heavy training with basic movements, and he's gotten impressive results from doing so himself over, over many, many years, so you can't argue with that. But uh, I'm going to read an excerpt from his book where he slams... Ken O'Booty. So let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. Work on scaling my crafting a little bit. And let's talk about this. And let's read the excerpt. And here's what was sent to me that Martin wrote. Again, from his new book. You guys can go buy the book if you're interested in reading the whole thing. But I thought this was pretty scathing. All right. He wrote, in 2016, I started to work and write again. As you might imagine, coming back was tough for several reasons. Explaining my absence being the least of them, but dealing with the consequences thereof, now that's a different story. My newfound outlook and restrained personality was immediately challenged and pushed, put to the harshest test possible. The void I'd left behind had been filled by someone whose name I immediately recognized. It was a former client of mine, and he had taken the plagiarism I was used to dealing with to a whole new level. YouTube. As a son of a wealthy oil merchant, this Canadian 20-something played to his strengths, funneling those resources into ad campaigns and video production. He dazzled his audience with displays of wealth, liberally using props like luxury cars and promotional models, playing beautiful women who just happened to be around. To this he added what he took from me and mixed in the right blend of life coaching advice, pickup artistry, and this profound statements you cringe at 10 years later in your 30s, shaking your head in disbelief when reminded thereof. Yet this was a winning formula. And it allowed him the impressive following he had amassed in record time. It was flash and flare over substance and competence. And he rose to the occasion with extravagance and enthusiasm and seemed perfect for the role. It was hard to deny that the kid had a knack for marketing, whereas I had little. While it came at the price of competence, those watching his silly antics didn't know, because he certainly knew his audience well enough, to lead his insecure peers where he wanted them, without exceptions in one of the sales pages for his overpriced PDFs. But like those who came before him, he kept the gimmicks and left the rest, greatly diminishing the end result as evidenced by those who ended up as before and afters to sell his schlock. He was, I finally realized, nothing more than a run-of-the-mill internet marketing poser, posing as a trainer. He just happened to be the most obnoxious and skilled thus far. Last I heard, he's selling sunglasses and according to a source has a makeup line for men in store, an interesting change of directions. Perhaps he's finally found his true calling like I have mine. Now that's one hell of a slam of Keno body because guys, let's, let's be realistic here. Um, I, I saw Martin's original LinkedIn stuff years ago, familiar with the material, very familiar with it. And Keno body came out after I was already here on YouTube and after I'd already mentioned Martin uh, from before. And someone sent me some of his books for free. Like They're like, can, can you take a look at this? And I realized looking at it, yeah, he straight up plagiarized Martin's work and really watered it down and made it less effective. And in other words, he took the stuff that Martin had already put forward and made it more appealing to the lazy, to like really lazy people. All the people that Martin talked about who had, you know, fuck around itis and everything that appealed to them. He pulled out the heavy squats and deadlifts. Um, and if, I, if my understanding was correct, I think Martin got pretty infuriated about that because Martin and I hold the same view of squats and deadlifts. If you really want to be big and strong, if you want to maximize your <laughs> potential, 
Uh, completely drug-free squats and deadlifts really shouldn't be optional exercises. They really shouldn't. They should be the cornerstones of your training. Uh, they're, they're important pillars of your training. But he took that out and tried to claim, oh, they'll ruin your physique. You know, you won't be able to get a superhero physique because your thighs will be too big. Yeah, because, you know, when people see comic book characters and superheroes, they never have massive quads. You know, like you never look at those guys and think that guy could squat 800 pounds, right? Deadlift 800 either. Yeah, right. But he marketed to these lazy people. And, you know, it, the scary part is it was all flair and flash. I mean, that's, that's what it was. The way he described it, um, you know, that he dazzled his audience with all this marketing. And it came at the expense of competence. Because realistically speaking, yeah, uh, Kenobody, who's, I guess his real name's Alan Gallagher. Yeah, he came on the scene and took his family money or whatever other money he had, and he marketed himself, put ads on YouTube, all this marketing everywhere to grow his channel, sell his books, now sell his products. You know, it came out as kind of this minimalist and that, that supplements don't work up until he started selling supplements. Um, you know, pulled all this nonsense, and then it turns out that when you watch him, he has no strength other than upper, upper body strength. Like he would say, oh, well, you just do this little bit of stuff for your legs, and it turns out he can barely, he can't even front squat 300 pounds. After a decade or more of training, he went to do deadlifts. He could only deadlift 405. I mean, those are noob numbers. This is stuff that the average lifter on a properly written program, healthy young man, can do inside of a year, right? If you're pro on a good program, and if you can't do these inside of a year, maybe your program wasn't that good. Uh, that just it didn't mean you didn't train hard. It just means your program wasn't that good. But that's what we saw. And then when you watch him try to perform basic exercises, he doesn't know how to perform them safely. I mean, this is stuff I've bashed on... Um, Gallagher about a lot is the way that he performs flat bench, incline bench, things like that. He is eventually going to destroy his shoulders. He is going to tear a pec because he never learned how to perform the exercises correctly. He's gotten as far as he has because he's put years of training in, at least on the heavy upper body stuff, uh, years and years of it with obviously just a little bit of pharmaceutical assistance, not a lot, but there's definitely a drop there combined with a lot of dieting and fasting. You know, I mean, obviously that's produce his look, but he's never learned to even perform these basic exercises competently. And he is eventually going to get hurt, but that's not going to matter because he's already going to have made all his money. He's already going to have made all his money. Um, but yeah, he just, it's, as Martin pointed out, this was one of his former clients apparently. And that part I was unaware of. I did not know that um, Ken Booty had been one of Martin's clients. And so now that becomes apparent becomes very apparent, and I can flat out understand why Martin's pissed off, and reasonably so. The guy basically stole his stuff, uh, ran with it, and uh, made a ton of money doing so, but he did so while destroying the main quality of the work, and his guys don't really get good results. I'm sorry, but uh, almost none of his real before and afters, you look at his followers, these guys aren't big and strong. They haven't really got results. But he's marketed to them with this whole metrosexual thing and all of this lifestyle that uh, he puts forward that he used family money to put on a show with. And that appeals to a vapid, insecure audience. And it really does. Uh, and yeah, it is hilarious. It's comical that now he's gone over to selling sunglasses and then he has those deadlift shorts. And uh, if he's actually selling a makeup line for men now, that's hilarious. That's hilarious, because again, that tells me everything about guys like uh, like Ken Obadi, because I mean, realistically speaking, I don't think he's that good with the ladies. I don't think he's that good with the ladies. That's just an act that's being put on, and that's kind of ridiculous, because the fact of the matter is the guy's got money, and he's good looking, and still probably doesn't ever seem to have girls around that he can't pay. That should tell you guys something. That's pretty bad, because normally you guys would think that's the stuff that's going to draw women to. He's like, well, he's got money and he's, he's, he's good looking. But, uh, yeah, even that's not really working. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, this guy's like Alpha Destiny in the sense of, is this really someone who, who's going to be qualified to be a pickup artist? I mean, and realistically, you start looking at his life coaching advice on top of it, and it's just, it's all style and no substance. I mean, his life advice, his stuff is like, yeah, you know, just uh, don't buy a car. Don't buy a car so you can help save money. He gave people all this information on how to create value to have money to start your businesses and everything. And all of it fell back to what he did and he could get away with because he had family who had stuff. It was like, 
Oh yeah, I mean, you know, don't buy food, just, just get food from your family, you know, you don't need to buy food. But it's like, he comes from a wealthy family that has a live-in chef who can prepare his meals for him. You know, and it's like, yeah, you don't go, don't go buy a car, just use, you know, what your family has available for you, you know, or use whatever. And it's like, well, his family has cars, they have money, he's living in his mom's mansion. <laughs> I mean, the absurdity of it. Like, his advice is not useful for other people. Uh, it's just crazy and ultimately yeah, that's what he did. He stole Martin's work and then took some of the best parts out of it Because well, man, that's too effective. and That's too hard And I don't want to have to do this stuff myself because he wants to be kind of lazy and not squatting deadlift You know gets, goes around doing dumbbell one-legged pistol squats and really thinks that's training Really thinks that's going to make him strong and get results that doesn't guys just because it's a balancing act And it's hard to balance doesn't mean that you're getting a good training response because you're not you're going to stay small and weak in your lower body doing that. Uh, but yeah, just ridiculousness. At the end of the day, when it turns out, he's not even competent enough to teach basic exercises. Like, he doesn't actually know how to perform any of the basic lifts safely and correctly. And the only reason he's pretty strong at pressing is years and years of doing presses with a little bit of pharmaceutical help. That's it. That's his magic secret. But he's eventually going to get hurt because he never even bothered how to, to learn how to perform those exercises. So yeah, I can appreciate uh, Martin's perspective here because some of this I wasn't fully aware of in the situation, and now I am. Um, and now that he's put that in his book, that's there for all of us to see. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.